I'm about to drop. It's this polka album called The Bad Beat. You know what okay. I mean? So I can't wait. I got all the tracks done. I got all the beats for everything. So that I'm gonna, oh my God, I just want to put my all into it. Eating chips straight off of your plate, fresh from the New York State, flexing on him cause he can. He put you all in because he can. All the way from Crown Heights, Brooklyn, yeah. representing the Buffalo Bills, getting all he can, all the chips, anything you got. I'll hopefully not even the pills. We got our boy Bob. Hey, let's give it up let's, for go, our boy, let's man. go. Let's go. What's popping? Man, the intro, like I was telling Tony, I had to try to do a little bit. I was actually in the lab a little bit. Big try guy, to put guy. together my little one two yes, just for the intro a little bit yes. one thing that you you mentioned was your love of just overall music and your overall love of poker so if you would tell us a little bit about who you are where you're from but would love to hear how you got into music and how you got into poker as well got you got you got you so my name is boss banger i was born in brooklyn I had a love for music early. One of my uncles used to rap all the time. He went away for a long time, left me mad hip hop tapes. You know what I mean? And just playing them and listening to these dudes create. I've always been a creative type dude. I love, you know what I mean? Living in my mind and then making something, putting something to paper and making it, you know what I mean, visible. So um, yeah, I always had that love for hip hop. Hip hop has been my earliest music passion. Um, Poker came later on, you know what I mean? Poker came later on. I um actually was incarcerated at the age of 19. You know, I got a um 15 year to life sentence for accessory, accessory to murder. And I ended up doing 17 years. So um, how poker came into my life was crazy because it was an uh, old Spanish man taught me how to play inside. You know what I mean? He was like, yo, listen, you get good at this. People always want to gamble. You get good at this, you're going to be able to feed yourself. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I know your people ain't sending you money, but you learn this, you be good. <laughs> <laughs> but he taught me. I can't even front. He taught me, you know what I mean? And he saw that I had a, a love for a love for competing, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it, it, it became my thing. And throughout the whole bit, that sometimes it was hard. I can't even front. I played poker in a place where I played out of necessity, right? I don't win, I don't eat. And you're not going to win all the time, right? So nice. I'm finding myself, like, you know, we talked about this before the interview, questioning, like, yo, am I doing the right thing? Like, you know what I mean? I ain't got mm -hmm. nothing in my locker right now. Like, am I doing the right thing? But the very next day, I'm at the poker table, bro. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it strikes, right? And, and this is when you really get a grasp on who you are in the grasp of the game. It strikes a confidence in yourself. Like, you know what? I might be down right now. I might not have nothing to eat right now. I might not have no money right now. But you know what? I got to buy in. Let's go. Because mm -hmm. I believe that I'm going to be all right. Right? So that's not the... Yeah, I, I, I came into the poker life out of necessity, really. So... Um, it's not the best way to live your life, live this poker lifestyle, right? Having to play and win out of necessity, but that's where I came from and, and it helped me build discipline. It helped me build character because, you know, I mean, I'm playing in an environment where, you know what I mean? Somebody could just say, you know what? I ain't paying you. I was going to say, it's What's that look like? So you playing for like food or you playing for like money to get food? Playing for both. You playing for cigarettes. You playing for food. You playing for pink slips. So pink slips is, you know <laughs> what I mean? Your people send me the money to my account. You know what okay. I mean? So we playing for all that. And you know what I mean? You playing around, you know what I mean? You in president. So you, you playing around people that get busy just like you get busy. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I know I thankfully I never ran the worst, the worst situation I ever got into was somebody couldn't pay me and then went and ratted on me and they threw me in a box for extorting to do, which I didn't. I just want money from poker from them. You know, Damn, I mean? so, so I so how bad was his loss? Was it like two cup of noodles and a nah, pack of he, it, it was, like it how was, big was his it loss? It was crazy with a young white kid, it was like two hundred dollars. Wow, yeah. and two hundred dollars. He 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 was like, <laughs> yo, I'm gonna go send that. And then he ain't never come back. Then the police came the next minute. 
Damn. So Jeez. tell me about like, well, 200 when you inside sound like a lot. Is that, would 200 be considered like a big loss? Like when you there, like you got to know that you got to know someone to get like a $200 pink slip. If I get a $200 pink slip, I could probably eat for like two months off of that. Yeah. yeah. Smoke me all the cigarettes I want, all that, and my commissary full. Nah, I got to tap back into when you first started playing. So when you, when you started to learn, I'm, Started off with just regular Texas Hold'em because I feel like different areas, people start off with different games. Like some people may start off with studs. Some people may start off with different versions. When they start off with you and what versions do you know now? Now, the only I play my my primary game now is Texas Hold'em. Mm -hmm. I do play some PLO too. Yeah, I love PLO. Inside, right? Y'all a bug the fuck out. As some of the games dudes be playing, they make everything a game. Deuce is a wow. <laughs> Your lowest card is wow. And if you hit a black queen, that's wow too. You know what I mean? And that's that's the games they play. And everybody calling their own games. Where's this at? In prison, in New York State prison. Oh, yeah. Oh. So it, it ain't no. Very rarely you'll see a only Texas Hold'em game. Oh, very okay. rarely. Everybody playing wild cards or basically seven card nothing wild. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> where you you'll get like three cards down, four cards up, but nothing's wild. Uh, a version of stud. You know what I mean? It's a tournament style, or is no? It's or, just a, it's a cash game style. The cash so, game. Yeah, so you will buy in, you get your set amount of chips for, let's say you come in with a pack, you might get 250 chips, and the chips is basically decks of cards, right? Okay. But they got special markings on them or whatever. So, they, you know, the denominations, you know what they are. Okay. And once you lose that 250, you got to buy back in, you know what I mean, with another pack of cigarettes. So. Okay. Let me ask you this. Was there like a person that ran the game and like took a rake or was it like yeah, you, I, I, their own little thing? Towards the end of my bid, probably like, I, I'll tell you, I play every day. So mostly every day. So towards the end of my bid, I was running all the games where I was at. But yes, whoever's <laughs> running the game, they take a cut off of every pot. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so I, now, mind you, check check this. I'm playing and I'm running the game and I'm taking my cut. Imagine the days where I'm losing it all. So I'm losing one yeah. and losing oh, the cut money and all oh, that. Crazy, bro. That's an ill feeling walking back to that cell. Like, yo, I cannot believe I did this, bro. That's like, probably worse than the feeling because you, when you leave in the casino, that walk back feel bad. But walking back to a jail cell after losing. <laughs> Uh, I'll be swinging in the sky the whole time. Just uh, to do. You hey, can't go back and watch TV. You can't go like do something else. You can't even go somewhere and say, yo, I'm going to just have a drink and chill and get my mind off of it. Like you yeah. literally been thinking about it the whole time. Bro, you go in that cell, you know what I mean? Do your little nightly routine wash or whatever, throw on your little headphones and take it down. Ain't nothing else to do because you mad as hell at yourself. <laughs> That's it, bro. <laughs> Take it down and worry about what you go, how you gonna get a buy in for tomorrow, bro. That's real shit. I don't know. I think I would be more, I'd be all right with that. I think I would be more heated if uh, that nigga, I beat that white boy and he fucking, he snitched. Wow, that was crazy, bro. They put me in a box for 15 days for that joint, man. Yeah. I was mad as hell, bro. He was gone when you got out? They shipped him out to jail. Because he went and, like, I was extorting him a sign. Damn, over a $200 pink $200 slip. That's $200 crazy. $200. Nah, but I seen worse, bro. I'll tell y'all some stories, man. I done seen nah, worse. I'm curious. What's the worst you ever had? And what's the worst you saw and how bad was the debt? That's what I want to know. So the debt wasn't bad. The debt was probably a carton of cigarettes. So That's, give or take like $30, $40. Late, late 90s, late 90s, early 2000s. So a carton probably was maybe, maybe $55, $60. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, a whole carton, not just a pack, but a whole yeah, carton. 10, 10 packs of cigarettes in the uh, you know yeah. I mean? Dude didn't pay. Man, I don't know. It was just overkill, son. Like, Cut the man in his face like twenty times, like when he came out the wreck. Twenty Damn. times, bro. Like, 
and I ran into that same dude that got it was crazy. It's crazy. It was crazy, bro, to see this man's face mm-hmm. over a freaking carton of cigarettes. He the one that didn't pay had the 20 cuts on his face. Was he playing? Was he playing uh was he playing poker after that? <laughs> oh, I, I I never saw him again at the poker table. I just saw him walking around like, oh, that's son. But he pays his debts now. Crazy. No. That dude was crazy. I that think if I got 20 stars from poker, I think that's my that's poker's the rest of my life. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know? bro, I shed blood for this. I gotta play now, right? right. <laughs> I gotta I'm play now. Now you you gotta get signed. If you got 20 scars, 20 buck fifties across your face, you gotta become a celebrity in poker. Win or lose, win you gotta get you gotta win something. Crazy, man. Crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. And then, gotta, then you got the you duck in the um, you know, that environment, how how it's so much um different out here. It's like that environment is like you, you like you said, like we said, somebody might not pay, right? That's one little ill. Um, you got homeboy stuff where you, my man, you know what I mean? Yo, son, just put me in the game. You know what I mean? Boom, boom. He put you in the game. Yo, I got you back. Homeboy shit. Put you in the game for like four packs. And you know what I mean? On, on the strength that we homeboys, you don't pay me. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Then you got the COs that, you know what I mean? Just, especially the young up and coming CO. Oh, y'all can't gamble and it's illegal. You know what I mean? In jail. So, Yo, what y'all doing? By I break up the poker table, take all the cigarettes, take everything. And if I'm running the table and everybody shit get took, they're like, "Yo, Sha, what up?" Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm like, "Listen, I ain't got nothing to do with that. I ain't tell that man to take <laughs> they took my stuff too." Facts. I would have to tell me like, and I'm like, "Hey, man. so next thing I want to ask too, because you brought up the whole CO stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But I remember, like, I'm thinking back for me. I remember there will always be some kind of shady CEOs that always did shit under the table for whatever right. reason. Right. On gambling wise, was there any CEOs that gambled with y'all? Like sat down, gambled with y'all, or right, tried to right, tax right. y'all when you ran Not a game? Poker, but um, like football pools, betting on football games and all that. They was definitely into that, but not college. You know, because they physically got to sit down at a table. You know what I mean? Amongst us, so they higher ups could walk in and be like, "What the fuck you doing?" Yeah. You know I mean? But they ever tried like to tax you when you were running the game? Like they ever said, "Yo, I know you running the game." You uh, hit us uh. But it, and that's the good thing about having relationships, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I told you, I went in at nineteen, eighteen, just turned nineteen. So I basically grew up in there. I came home at thirty four, right? Mm-hmm. So. I learned to have relation. You inside with a whole, with every different type of people, right? And mm-hmm. you know, what I mean, every if you, I'm, I never had the mentality like every cop, every CO is a is a dickhead, is a bad dude. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. not having that mentality allowed me to, you know, what I mean, move and shake and get, you know, what I mean, certain respect in certain areas. So, gotcha. And they respect when you have time in. So. If I if I got like 10 years in, 12 years in, you know what I mean? They're gonna give me more leeway than somebody that only got like 90 days in a year. You know what I mean? So they they ain't never fuck with me though. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So games that ever got shut down, really? Yeah, they got shut down. Like they oh. they do like um, you know what I mean, raids and shit. Like on well, one time they and I should have got a ticket for this shit. So I tell you how we had the chips. Right, mm-hmm. they just playing cards, but they all marked up. So you know, this one's a five, this one's a ten, this one's a hundred. Now I had, right. you know, I mean, stacks of them in my cell. You know, what I mean, they shook down my cell, found them. You know, what I mean, they just took them, but they ain't write me up. They supposed to write me up for gambling paraphernalia. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, but they yeah. never did though. Wow. But you, you season, so you're a senior, basically. So right, 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 right. So I just got to make some more cards up. That's all. <laughs> we going back to the yard to play yeah. some more poker, bro. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So I, I'm sure, man. I, I know everybody's gonna want to want to ha- want to know what uh what happened. Were you innocent? What what happened with no, you? No, 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 no. Um, I when I was 19, I had signed up to go to the Navy in nope. June of 1995, okay. but I couldn't leave for boot camp until September. Okay. So um, while I'm waiting to go to boot camp in July. Mm-hmm. My sister um, hit up my little brother like, yo, my boyfriend's beating me up. I want 
you and him to beat up my boyfriend. Now, mind you, they older than us at this time, older sister and shit. Mm -hmm. So we went, um, me and my brother went, pounded dude out, and I mean, knocked him out in the, in the driveway and boogie, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Me, him, and my girl boogie. The next day, I'll go pick up my little brother. My mom's was in a rehab, so we was going to see her. Mm -hmm. So I went to go pick up my little, this happened in Long Island. Went to go pick up my little brother, and he like, yo, son, she killed him. I'm like, what the fuck you mean she killed him? She was like, bro, while he was knocked out, she went outside, set him on fire, and killed him. Oh, shit. Sure. I'm like, you fucking lying, bro. And that's what she did, and we all got accessory to murder for that shit. Damn. All right, I fought that shit for three years, but the ill shit was that how they got us in it. And, and it's ill because as, as I grew in my growth and development, I had to come to the realization that, yes, I am guilty of that man's death because, you know what I mean? If I didn't do what I did, I agreed to assault him. You know what I mean? Even though all the murder shit was never on my mind, but I did agree to assault. But once you agree to commit a felony, to do something, anything that happens at the course of that felony, you're guilty of too, right? That man would still be here if I would have said, no, I'm not beating him up. You know what I mean? So I had to, that's something I definitely had to live with for the rest of my life. Yeah. That's rough. That's crazy. Damn. Wow, I wasn't expecting that story at all. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's L and every, and I've never been in trouble before. Like, I'm, I'm a nerd, bro. Like, I live and I write books, I write movies, I write rhymes, I write, you know what I mean? I live in my head, I'm a creator, you know what I mean? Never yeah. been in trouble before, but I always had a problem with domestic violence, right? So that's mm -hmm. something I, you know what I mean? I had to um, reconcile with. Growing up, I always had a problem with it. So, and she knew that. So when she came to me, she knew I was going to jump out the window. Right. Yeah. For sure. I was about to say too, just hear the story and the way you told the story, like you could tell I'm envisioning the whole story in my head. I'm seeing a young, a young version of you in 95. I'm envisioning everything. So I'm curious for you. Did you ever think about like, making this a movie or like a short film or like, cause I think it's a dope story and a dope mm. idea. And even you just telling the story, I'm envisioning it. So I would, that's something like, I could just see Netflix picking this up and then we have part two is like a poker movie or some mm. shit. But just the beginning part sounds dope as hell. You ever thought about making it a, a story you ever wrote about it? Like anything about this or just? Now, this is not the first time this question has come to me. Yo son, when you gonna write this? When you gonna write that story? Yeah. Like, it's so, and, and, and I, I write about personal stuff all the time, right? But um, I have to come to a point where in my creativity and in myself where I got to be able to stand on that I'm not writing this story for me. I may be writing it for another young brother that needs to get through something, right? But right now, selfishly, it's too personal for me to write. You know what I mean? It's, oh, it, sure. it is. So, but eventually we, that may definitely be, be um, a situation that transpired while I put pen to paper and put that story down. Definitely. No, for sure. And mm -hmm. it's just one of those things too, like to, to know and to hear the story and to see, like we all just meeting each other, but you know how you just have a good spirit and a good vibe about someone and you know it's all just positivity. Yo. Like hearing like the situation and seeing how you are today, like, I mean, for me, that's inspiring for me. And who knows who you could touch with the story or who knows who will even touch with just this episode of the podcast. Yo, I think listen, to the, listen to how crazy this is, right? You have, when you inside, right, you have a lot of COs and, you know what I mean, um, people above you, and they look down on you hard body, like, you know what I mean? You're a criminal, you, ah, right? <laughs> and right now, I have a job where um, I drive buses in my area. I used to drive out in Buffalo, but now I drive buses in my area. And one of my, um, one of my coworkers was an ex-correctional officer, right? Same level in life you know what i mean same level in life but if we would have met 20 years ago he probably would have shit it on me you know what i mean but today we on the same level in life you know what i mean mm -hmm. so it's just it's just ill how um 
to recognize that, you know what I mean? Never look down on somebody in, in no situation because you never know, right, where you're going to meet this person again. You know, yeah. what level of life y'all both going to be on. And, and I was going to say, too, it's funny you say that because, like, when you want a downswing, to take it back to poker a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, like, when you want a downswing, you got to play lower sometimes. Sometimes right. you might be playing with three, four, five hundred in front of you, and then you got to humble yourself and go back down to like, damn, you know what? All I could buy in for right now is just a hundred. I'm a grind this hundred. Oh, shit, I've been where the minimum buying was fifty dollars, and it's like, yo, all I that's two buy-ins instead of one. I'm gonna do fifty Thanks, and fifty man. and not look down on anything Thanks, else. Man. So for you, I'm curious, like, what stakes of poker do you play right now? Like, what what what's the highest you've played, and what do you play on average right now? Like, is it cash tournaments or what stakes? Okay, so I usually play um mostly tournaments, right? So uh, the highest tournament, <laughs> the highest tournament, and I play online. I play on America's Car Room every day. I stream it on day. Twitch. Um, bar seven one eight. Hey, gotta show love to the seven one eight. Almost my favorite time of the day, seven one eight. Right, that's right. So <laughs> I um I usually buy in the highest tournaments. I you I go up to one oh nine sometimes. But regularly, I'm mid stakes. I'm twenty thirty three. Son, I'm sixteen fifty. The sixteen fifty six k guarantees the six k. And the- Come on, man, they got twelve point five k's and all. Yeah, I'm buying in for those. You know yeah, what I mean? It's just right. bigger fails. You know what I mean? And I, 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 it's ill what you said because sometimes when you have to drop down, right? And you go to the to the two fifty tournaments, the four forties, and all that. Everybody be like, "Yo, you don't never drop down because these players is just wild. They don't know what they're doing. They gonna bad beat you all the time, man. Uh, dang, man, you got to do what you got to do, right? Absolutely. If, you know what I mean, if if you see you got a table full of wild dudes, fall back and trap something. You know what yep. I mean? Because mm-hmm. we were there, it ain't like we never were there. We were there, so uh, definitely we, in a little dollar ramas. That's what yeah, they yeah, definitely or right. dollar ramas. We definitely gotta adjust our thinking to, you know, what I mean, yeah. this person trying to win the tournament just like me. So if he want to keep going wild and shoving, I'm gonna just wait till I got a hand it. God bless him if he cracked me. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what's your biggest cash? Global poker. I hit for like five grand. Okay. Hey. Yeah, I hit for like five grand. What was the buy in? It was a um it was one of those weekend tournaments, 109 buy in, three hundred thousand dollars guarantee. Oh. So I ended up placing and getting like five grand. Oh, okay, so okay. Going back and reliving like that big moment, like when you get deep in those tournaments and the prize pool is so big, like it, it does become a little nerve wracking at times. Like there's times where like, I literally don't know what to do when the clock is going and I'm like, should I call? Should I fall? What if he has this? Like reliving that moment. Do you remember like any specific hands or at any point where you like really nervous about your decision, just like it being your deepest run and your biggest cash? You know, what's what? crazy right before the money in that tournament, I had probably I was probably second in second in chips, right? It's probably the third the third at the table, probably the third person in chips, right? I forgot, I, I I knew a screen name, but I keep forgetting it, right? He kept he was just super aggressive, right? Pocket kings under the gun, I got men raised, right? And we're about ten from the money. Right, men raise. He is in the cutoff jams all in. I'm talking about I'm first now. We deep in the tournament. Do this first and one dude is first in chips. I'm second in chips at the table. And this dude is third in chips, right? And but he's been playing the last six, seven hands, just mm-hmm. aggressive. Mm-hmm. Shoves. <laughs> so what do you have? Yes, yeah, pocket nines. What do you have? Pocket kings. 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 Uh, yeah, kings. I'm men raised okay. with kings under the gun. Yeah. He has pocket nines. I uh-huh. I I I can never say that I'm a poker player 
that I'm a gangster, that I I, I will survive in any situation in life if I don't make this call, right? <laughs> I cannot yeah, you got do to. it, bro. Yeah. I cannot fold kings here. Call it. Mm-hmm. Five, six, eight, seven, done. Damn. Put, right now, on my, the third. I tell you, I made five, I made five K in the tournament. He put me down to I like three or four big blinds, bro. Yeah, and you in the big blind the next hand because you were under the gun. So now you just you lost all your chips bro, and I'm now a, you're in the big blind. I doubled up six times in a row, Let's bro. Go. But do you know the hurt feeling I had <laughs> to make that right decision and him for him to crack me like that, bro? That mm-hmm. close to the money. And when we talked, we talked about earlier about being religious. I'm more spiritual than religious. But in my head, I'm like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> I'm trying to be nice to everybody, bro. Facts. Why would you let these nines crack me right here? Right? But I, I, I would make that call every single time, bro. Yeah. Every yeah. single time I would make that call. So yeah, that that it was it's deep. We if we can't come to a place in our poker life where we know the right decision to make and then make it, right? We can never advance to upper tier levels, right? I what? know that this, and, and this is ill, Niagara Falls closed. They had the only poker room in this era, area. They closed, I used to play there all the time. One mm-hmm. thing I learned is that old men do not bluff, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Old white men do not bluff, bro. If they mm-hmm. acting strong, they got it, right? Mm-hmm. So, I don't know if that's that, that, that that's my that's my so experience. I, I don't know. Like I just put up a video. There's this mm. guy fucking he just fucking check jams the river with bottom pair. The board is like I open under the gun, right? I won't tell you what I have. I open under the gun. He uh this is at this is live at fucking turn the stone, right? Mm. So I open under the gun. I won't tell you what I have. Everybody else folds around, comes to this guy who's in the big and he's not even in the big line, he's probably on my button. Right. And he called. No, he must have been a small one because I remember he threw in some chips. So he calls and flock comes out ace, king, three. Right. So he checks. I put out a C bet of like quarter pot, right? 2,500 or something like that. And he just snap jams in like another like 18K or something like that. Right. So I'm like, what the fuck? All right. So I almost fold, right? And then I look at the board. There's like a flush draw on the board. There's like two two spades, mm-hmm. right? So I'm looking down at my pocket fives. <laughs> and I make the call. And sure enough, he had six three. <laughs> yeah. He had a pair of threes. No flush draw. Just, you know. Hold on, hold on. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go back a little bit. <laughs> There's a video. What, what read did you have to call <laughs> off with five? Because listen, he raises, he's like I said, like uh like old, like you just said, old people, like they're gonna raise. They're not gonna like if he has an ace or a king, like any big ace, he's gonna raise there. Gotcha. Or if he has like a small ace, he's not gonna just throw in the chips, he's gonna think about raising for a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So So the jam was your read. The jam told you that he doesn't have it. Yeah, yeah. The check okay, game. okay. That's that, that's respectable. I can respect yeah. that. And yeah. a lot of times you do that when they have like a flush draw or something. Flush you know. Draw. So I was thinking at first like maybe he has like a king high flush draw, so the pair of kings would beat me. But mm. I looked at him and I was like, something's telling me he doesn't got it. Like, oh, mm. I was right. <laughs> right, right. Now look, this is what I'm going back to where we know the decision to make and we make it right. I'm mm. in your position. Hopefully, I get through that thought process to be like, he's bluffing, right? Hopefully. But when we get to the point where we know what to do and then do it, now we can take our game to another level. Now, right. when somebody just four bet as big, you know what I mean? We raise under the gun, get a two calls, and then it gets to the button, and they fucking smash it, right? Mm-hmm. And you sitting there with ace queen, and your mind should be telling you if you give yourself time to think, I might not be good here. Yeah. Exactly. Let me put it in the deck. You know what I mean? So, but a lot of us, we can't get to the point where we know what to do and then do it. You know what I mean? And you notice as the, the, the pros, they take so long to think, process, move. You know, there's 
15. Who's that guy? He doesn't even move for, for like 30 seconds before every. Who is it? Um, is it? No, I don't think it's Blue Not Dwan. No, Dwan. Dwan moves. I don't know, but yeah, yeah. So, so tell us about your uh, your uh, turning stone experience. Man, I, I went last year and I went this year. So last year was better than this year, right? Because I only got to play in one tournament this year, unfortunately. <laughs> um, but um, my most memorable hand this year was um, I. But besides the one I got knocked out, I'm gonna tell you the one I got knocked out into. But I got um pocket sevens and the cutoff. Yeah, pocket sevens and the cutoff. Um make a standard two and a half, you know what I mean, blind raise. Gets to the big blind, young kid, right? And it's ill. It's ill that I made this read. He raised it to 3,100, right? Now, mind you, I'm going to bring it back a little bit. He had just got changed for one of his $5,000 chips, right? Mm -hmm. So he just got all the different denominations, all the different colors and everything, the 100, the 500, the 1,000. Yes. But he when he raised 3,100, he put in a 5,000 chip. Mm. Instead of, he got enough to put in three 1,000s and 100. He got that in Mm -hmm. front of him. Mm-hmm. So I, that that was weird to me that he did that, right? Mm-hmm. He like slammed it down like it was supposed to scare me, like the five thousand shit was supposed to rub me off. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I just called, right? Flop comes nine nine three. Mm-hmm. He jams. There was sevens, right? He jams. Yeah. yeah well, right. I call, yeah. instant call, because I yeah. had right knowing it and being able to do it. Is that's how we take our game to the next? I know you're stunned, right? Yeah, it's Ace King all day. I thought it was Ace King. It was seven eight. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. And thank God yeah. the eight didn't hit and knock me out. How old was this guy? Young, young kid, oh, okay, young kid, okay. Word, okay. young kid. So they I say anything up, after the hand, or I ended up no, no. Um, my two pages smacked me. Ain't nothing else come. No, no, I was saying after the hand, did he say anything at all? Like, no, he just got up, he just got up and walked away. I know yeah. he was tight, but I know, yeah, I mean? like the old man was tight himself, calling him with the fire. <laughs> yo, I, yo, I tell you, I seen crazy stuff. Like, there was another guy, he was real short. We had just all made the money, he was real short. Like, he must have had like five big blinds, right? Mm. And there was a guy with like 200 big blinds at the table. He was just running over the table, raising everything. And it came to this guy in the big blind and he raises it to like 2.5. Mind you, he only, this guy only has five big blinds. Right. Like flicks in, he flicks in the whatever the, you know, the, if it was like one, two, it was double what he flicked. He only put it and he, it was just the stupidest thing. So mm. he had like five big blinds. Again, the big blind was what one two. Then he put made it four big blinds, right? So the guy calls, leaving himself one big one blind. big blind. Yeah, but for no reason because he, his hand was like three seven, right? And I think what he thought was he might have some like fold equity with that one chip, like because I see this online a lot. People will just call, hit some, hit a pair, and then jam all in, or don't hit a pair and jam all in. And either way. You're, you're kind of balancing how you do it, right? And so this, this is what he did. He just, like, called, left himself one chip. But he's playing against a guy with, like, 200 big blinds, right? But so long story short, he didn't hit any of the flop, and he jams all in. And, mm-hmm. uh, and the kid starts laughing, and everybody at the table starts laughing. because like, That's an ill strategy. <laughs> just throw, just fold it or put it all in, motherfucker. Nah, that I mean, he, yeah, in that case, yeah, because he doesn't have, you know, enough chips to actually you have no fold equity, my yeah. brother. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more funny when he flips over to three seven, right? Like, oh. Right, right, right. Now, if we got pocket aces, man, I could yeah. maybe understand that strategy, maybe yeah. trying to yeah. get other people to call. I don't know, that's weird, but yeah, the hand I get knocked out in, and I was, I wasn't really too upset with myself because of a little bit on the drive home because I could have made the fold, right? Mm. So I open up 
King Jack suited, right? Yeah. Um, under the gun plus one, opened it up. The um somebody in middle position calls the guy with the button. Me and him are the chip leaders at the table. Smashes it for like 7,200. I think, I think the blind was not even a thousand at the time. And 7,200, he made it. So I'm out of position. All I got is a big suited connector <laughs> with a person behind me. And I make the call. Right, mm -hmm. should have folded. Yeah, right, should have folded. I have to play this hand out of position. I'm looking for a miracle flop. It don't happen. It doesn't happen. I just donated. You know what I mean? Well, I I think that I if there's no person behind you, I I think the 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 call's okay. Right, no person behind me, definitely okay, definitely. Yeah, right. And why this particular player? Right, he was maybe a little bit younger than me, but he's smashing the table too. And everything he's showing is legit. Like he's not playing. He, he, he know how to play this fucking game. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know what I mean? You, I'm thinking, yeah, he's using his position against me, but he ain't no bum. So be careful. You know what I mean? When I make the call, miracle mm -hmm. flop comes King Jack three. Okay. Jack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jack. Makes it like 12,000, think for a little bit, stunt for a little bit, shove. Insta call from him. Aces. Damn. Next card is a three. I'm three, yeah. yeah. Next card is a three, I'm going. So I was uh, kicking myself in the ass for not making the folds, you know what I mean? Uh, nah, you but great not. experience, though. Nah, there's nothing you can do about that. I mean, you can't. You can't fold there. I mean, you can fold there because there's a guy behind. Let me just so you open somebody called behind you and then somebody mm -hmm. three back. Yeah, yes. it's it's hard there because you know that person that called right behind you could be trapping with aces. Exactly. It's rare, but like I think by the GTO book, you you know you're supposed to fold yeah, there. Definitely, um, definitely, it's close though. I'm sure it's really close because of the spades and you know. I guess I I I, I would assume that it has. A lot to do with how strong you think the guy to your left is, and you know, and how because a lot of times that's dead money. Now he he because the the guy that three bet he didn't jam right. No, he just, no, no. Yeah, he, so now he, he three bet. Size did oh, really oh, big also. Big though, yeah, it was a big three bet from the bucket. Yeah, yeah. yeah so like, so what happens now when he, you call and that person was trapping with aces and he jams now you or maybe he had like jacks or something you know and now he's like ah, fuck this we're not it's too much money in there let's get it all in with jacks or tens now you have to fold you know and before that hand right i told you me and him were the chip leaders at the table to do that crack me and before the hand i'm telling myself right mm -hmm. stay away from him mm -hmm. Just not for games play or I'm scared of his game or anything, but chip stack wise, pick on anybody else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Stay away from him. He the only one that can hurt you. You know what I mean? Stay with. And as soon yeah. as he raise on that fucking button, I'm like, my eyes glowing. I'm Yo, like, I, yeah, I, I can get him. I can get him. I feel like the poker gods know when we tell, like, when we say that, because I, I feel like every time I'm like, "Yo, stay away from that big stack," I end up in a fucking pot against him. In a pot with him. <laughs> <laughs> and I find this online, bro, with myself was, online. Deep runs. I be making deep, deep, deep runs. Tell her, stay away from somebody that can hurt your stack. Especially on ACR. Uh, bro, this shit feel rigged. Ace, king, boom, raise, smash by the big stack. Like, for fucking a hundred times the fucking shit. I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> well, let me ask you this. Sometimes online feels rigged, like it feels fake to me sometimes. So I'm curious if like while playing in jail, you ever felt like you ever seen anyone get cheated or you ever seen or like anything happen where people cheated when you I were think the dude that taught me how to play cheated me. <laughs> he's the only one right or maybe i was just terrible when i first started because he just kept winning you know what i mean but other than that one thing i i did see was you know people used to play together they're not basically 
You know what I mean? They doing mm-hmm. some rounder shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're not playing against each other, but we're not playing together type shit. You know what yeah, I mean? like I'm and then the new dude sort of that like that's your whole boy. You not you gonna you not gonna really you wanna check it down like ah right, you gonna mm-hmm. not make it look too too hot, but you're not trying to like kill your boy. Exactly. I've definitely seen that, but nothing, nothing all I is it unless unless you super super duper gangster, I don't think you want to be cheating people in pressure. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, okay, your shit got a, your name got to ring bells, bells, man. Yeah. And well, like usually the two don't correlate. You know, you. I mean, that's not true. That's not true. There's some smart ass gangsters yeah, out there. Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, I was gonna ask next, right? It's like, I right, there was no cheating in jail. But I don't know, do you play like underground cash games in Buffalo or anything like that? Because they got to be cash games or something going on or someplace. Because I always feel when there's like underground games, you don't know which games are legit or which ones you could be cheating on. So, you know, about or have you seen anything in any of the underground games? Now, so I don't play any of them. Right. I get gotcha. invitations to them. Right. Um, dudes that hit me up, like especially one dude I met at Turner Stone last last year. He lives in Lockport, maybe a half an hour, hour away from me. And he was like, yo, be having home games. You know what I mean? Come through. You know what I mean? Bye, bye. I, I, I'm i more scared of myself than anything. Because if I peep it, it's a problem. You know what I mean? And I'm scared that y'all playing together. I don't know you dudes. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I don't even involve. I'm good with my little ACR. Let ACR rape me all the time. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> So do those home games they be cash games or tournaments or yeah, they be cash games? They be cash yeah. games. Yeah, they, they be inviting me yeah. over. I'm like, ah, I, I, I can't do it, man. Yeah, I yeah. can't do it. Wait, so you miss. where where you where do you stay right now? You I'm in Medina. It's like um an hour away from Buffalo. Oh, okay. New it's, York. Yeah, small town. So it's near near Rochester. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. You heard um that did I talk to you about uh uh, Borgata in May? No. Yo, oh, Borgata got a tournament, bro. Borgata's got a, um, I'm telling everybody too, it's going to be Look big. Oh, Damien, it's, it's, it's an $800 buy in, but no. it's a, a, million, a million dollar guaranteed. Oh, it's going to smash a million. Oh, not, but not only that, it's a 100K starting stack, bro. Deep stack, bro. I love it. I can't wait. At, in uh, May? In May, it's early May, like May 10th. I might have to fuck with it, Tony. Not, not even might. I got to make up for turning snow with you. I got to head out there because yeah. I left you hanging. Yeah, oh, great. If you could, Damien, because I'm out there, bro. Like, Wait, Borgata is in Jersey? Yeah, yeah. Borgata is in Jersey, Atlantic mm. City. So for you, okay. the drive shouldn't be too, too bad. And it's crazy because I'm, I'm going to Brooklyn at the end of June to see fam. So I don't know. I gotta make. I gotta. I gotta make that. It's gonna be like a fucking six and a half hour drive anyway. Yeah. Oh, beginning of May. Okay. Okay. Yeah, um. I'm yeah. Look that yeah. I'm looking at. Oh, I'll keep you in the loop. There's just keep it. Just uh, look it up. It's called the Almighty. Uh, the Almighty Million is Millionaires or something like that. Okay. But uh, there's something weird that that they're they're doing with registration. I think you can register starting May first online. If I okay. read it right. So I, I'm gonna keep staying in the loop. I don't know if you have to be in state or 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 what. So oh, okay, gotcha. Um, our boy, uh, our boy Captain Crunch, um, he went up there with me. You met him. He go to Tyler. Oh, okay, you meet him? yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yes. dude, I was at Turner Star with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he lives in New Jersey, so he could possibly register us. You know oh, what I'm saying? Okay, gotcha, gotcha. If, if you have to be in state, um, but it's it's definitely gonna be worth it. I mean that. Over a million guarantee. Uh, you, yeah. you gotta take risks, you gotta take shots. I'm shit. down, but I just I put that going, on Twitter. How could you win if you never take a shot? Fags though. Hey, right. got to. And mm-hmm. so you brought up the family stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And this is a question that I want to open up for all of us as just you know, black men and black fathers. So I know you do have a daughter. I'm not sure how old she is now, because I think it, when I did my yes. research, she was yeah. 16. So You're the six. question. 
Six. All right. Mm-hmm. Do you plan on? T- I have a little. Uh, well, can't call him little anymore. I have a twelve-year-old son. So mm-hmm. for my son, I'm like, yo, I do not want to teach him poker at all. I don't mm-hmm. want him to go through the highs and the lows of poker. Or, like get like have to worry about him getting addicted or even worse than I was with poker. Do you plan on teaching your little ones uh, poker? Absolutely. Absolutely. She already loves it, right? We play at home sometimes. She loves it, right? But um, to to delve into what you said, you don't want certain things to happen with teaching your little one. And you already went through the experiences, so you That's could teach true. them. Yo, listen, you know what I mean? This is this is the move. This is the way to go, blah, blah, blah. But yeah, it's it's a passion of mine. I, I, be, I got a studio in my crib, so I've been here making music. My little daughter love music. She always want to rhyme all, all the time. You know what I mean? I love that. She, Daddy, I mm-hmm. want to be just like you. Yeah, just be just and like that's, you. I'm a, and that's, I'm and that's yeah, like their your kids are going to want to be just like you regardless of what you do or don't teach them, right? So he's going to see you playing poker. He's going to see you you know, when you're happy and when you're when you're not happy from losing that poker. Right. So regardless of what you teach him or don't teach him, he, he might end up in poker, you know? Exactly. It's what he's you doing. He wants to be like that, you know? And, and it's <laughs> ill because, yeah, I tell you, I, I stream online. I get her on the weekends because she stays with her moms and I get her every holiday and for the summers. But when she's here on the weekends, I don't stream Friday and Saturday, right? Yeah. But sometimes she's here during the week, and I, Daddy, got to go stream. Why are you always playing poker? That's all you care about is poker. Uh-huh. <laughs> right? uh-huh. But, baby, I'm doing it. I'm trying to, you know what I mean, make make moves for us. And all that. That's all you want to do is play poker. Okay. No. I mean, every Friday I go play poker. My uh, my five-year-old's like, he comes up to me. He's like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm going to play poker. He's like, oh, I hope you win. I'm like, oh. There you go. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's a good vibe. Yeah, that's yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, but that's the so biggest, you teach biggest them, blessing Tony? in my life. Biggest blessing. Um, yeah, if, you, if they want to learn, I'll teach them, you know. Mm-hmm. But I think you, if you're teaching your kids uh, poker, you should be teaching them, um, like, other things first, like money management and, mm-hmm. you know, should have, they should have, like, an understanding of, like, what it means to, like, the value of money, right? So they should have, like, chores, you know, they should be, you know, gaining some money, you know, and, and figuring out what things cost in the world and, you know. My kids ain't, they're not interested in none of that. <laughs> so, right, 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 right. right. The, value, the value of credit, you know what I mean? Shit 100%. Growing up, you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. So, so, if they're not interested in that, then they're probably not interested in poker. So, right, right, right. When so they, when they, whenever they want to know, I'll teach them, man. There you, you know? go. I think both y'all had wise advice and y'all shifted my perspective where I think I might be open to teaching him now. But mm-hmm. one of the things like we spoke about earlier was like just the things we've done to get a buy-in. So mm-hmm. like the most extreme thing like I've done to get a buy-in was like, I like went ahead. This is probably during college times, right? Mm-hmm. Like I went to school upstate SUNY Morrisville, um, probably like 30 minutes away from Turning Stone. Mm-hmm. And I had no money at all. But back then, you know, you could sell your textbooks. So I'm like, <laughs> damn, like I got the textbook. My mans have the textbook too. We both don't need the textbook. So I actually went and I sold back. And it was a big textbook too, fresh. It was one of those like $200 books. So, you know, you could get like a hundred and change for the textbook. So I'm like, yo, my, I say, yo, I hope you will do some work together. Is it cool if I like buy your book? Like if I come up, I win money. Like I'm going to hit you off just because of the fact you, you held it down. But God forbid it don't work out till I get my money up. I'm going to have to borrow your textbook. So that was probably the most extreme thing I ever did. And I lost that money so fast. Wow. Like, that feel the worst. Trekking through the snowstorms upstate to get the textbook mm-hmm. over and over. I'm like, damn, you should have just kept the book, did all of that for a buy And Now look what you got to go through. So I'm curious <laughs> yeah. what's the most extreme thing you ever did for a buy whether in jail or in life. Wait, hold on. Rewind. Did you fail the class too? I hope you passed the class. Ah, I, I, I barely got through, Tony. I'm sure I got to see. As long as I got through, I'm sure I got through. That's right. That's <laughs> right. But, yo, the illest thing I ever did probably was at Niagara Falls Casino. I just got cracked in the, in a, in a, um, I was playing cash game. Just got cracked. Oh, broke. Ain't got nothing. Broke, broke, broke. I know that feeling. 
it's late too. It's probably like three in the morning. So I'm walking through the casino. One of the dudes that was at my table earlier on, he was drunk as fuck, drunk, just mad money though. Just flinging chips like he ain't care, right? Mm -hmm. He was playing fucking dice, right? In mm -hmm. the casino. Mm -hmm. Why this man, I'm walking by, right? Why this man fumble and drop all his chips? I'm talking about $100 chips, all that on the, on the floor. Uh, I'm from Brooklyn, so I think fast. <laughs> 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 I kneeled down and helped him pick up some of his chips. Put them in his hand, but I cuffed two black ones, two $100 chips. Yeah. Right? No. So he counting, he telling the dude, yo, I think I'm missing something. He drunk as fuck, though. The uh, dude's like, nah, I seen him give you everything. But I, mm -hmm. bro, went and cast him $200 chips. And yeah. Yeah, went, right probably the, went right back to the poker table and bought back in and lost them. Too. Ah. <laughs> yo, so. Lost remember, them, too. I remember one time for me, this shit, my girl still talks about this shit, too. She was like, I I don't remember. Oh, I do remember. It must have been around here. I was like Foxwoods or Mohegan. When yo, when I was young, man, I I was bad, y'all. I don't know. <laughs> I was, discipline wise, I was, nah, just yeah. I mean, not discipline wise. I just like I told Damien a while ago. I used to like what my favorite movies was like Ocean's Eleven, and I I thought I was smarter than everybody. I used to be fucking stealing. I remember in college, me my. my when incriminating well, we used to just walk out of the supermarkets, you know, fucking gross like carts filled to the top with food. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we was wild. Mm. So, you know, I tried to get better after college, but I think there's a, still a little bit of thief left in me. I don't steal at all now, but mm. um I remember one time I had busted. This is probably like one of the last times I played cash too. Just lost a bunch of money in cash. And I tried to be cool and like, go, like I was talking to this waitress and you know how the waitress be walking around with all the, the cash in the, in the cups. She had a 20, a couple of 20 sticking out. So I tried to like cross my arms and snatch it with my <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Dead. Lit that shit in my, my, my fucking, my uh, sleeve real quick. But she, she must have felt it or something and she turned around real quick and was like, What's going on? She like started counting the things. And I was like, I was like, no, nah, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> right, right, right. Over there, like trying to keep a straight face, but oh like, god. At any second. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> for real. They be peeping that when they money gone, bro. I and I thought about it. I don't know why the fuck I did that. Like if if she had just went and said, Yo, check the cameras real quick, the cameras would have caught me right, like that. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 it was the dumbest right. thing I could have ever done. And right. I thought about it. Probably made me stop stop stealing exactly, today. exactly, uh, exactly. And like my situation, they could have checked the cameras, and I don't know if they would have caught it. You know, what I mean, I cuffed that shit mad quick, but yeah, I, it yeah. could have been a situation. You know, what I mean, but it it it, it was like we said, it was a desperate situation. Like you know, what I, mean? <laughs> I, I gotta try to get this money back. You know, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, I, I was just stupid. Like two hundred. That's that's actually an okay come up. Twenty bucks. Right, 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 right. Yeah, right. yeah I was about to say, Tony. That's just a tilt anger move. Like, uh huh. Oh. Speaking of tilt, uh, I had an ill experience again at Niagara Falls. Got knocked out of the tournament on, on a bad beat. There was this black dealer named Duke, old timer, mad cool. Mm -hmm. and, and he gave me a jewel, right? The dude cracked me. Now it was a two day tournament. I'm back on the second day, like 20 uh -huh. away from the money, and got mm -hmm. cracked, right? I smacked the table mad hard. Boom! Everybody chips for <laughs> my shit. I grab my, my bad. I've been visiting this right. shit. Right. I would grab my coat. I'm walking out. Duke come up behind me. He was like, yo, let me talk to you real quick. I'm like, what? I'm tight as fuck. Tilted out my mind. He said, don't ever let me see you do that again, bro. He was like, listen, you're a good player, man. He said, take your ass whoopings like a man. Yeah. So he just the fact that he talked to me so raw, like take your ass whooping like a man. Don't yeah. ever let me see you do that again. But he talking to me like big brother, little brother, like yeah. that shit wasn't a good look. You smacking the table like that, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
I try never to let myself get tilted like that again. And they'll try to get you to that level. You know what I'm saying? You know, you definitely don't want that. <laughs> it's ill, right? It's ill. My perspective of us in the poker world, right? I think we have an advantage. I think so as well. Like right. I, I use it to my my advantage all the freaking time too. Where I come to a table, I'm like six two. I'm mad. Like I'm not little, and I don't say a word. And I realize when I talk, I try to be friendly, try to chop it up with everyone. They play me a little bit different, but when I sit there, it don't say a word. They scared as hell. They don't want to suck out on me. They don't want to bad beat me. I just look at people like how Ivy look at people. And it's the <laughs> intimidation factor of like just us. They're, like you can literally see people scared and just see them fold sometimes. So I definitely think we have an advantage. I see that's that. One, that's one I, point. Go ahead. I get it, bro. But most of the time, I feel like people just don't believe us. And if you just stay tight, Either in bet and play, play, you know, bet strong, but you know, don't chase them away. You're gonna get paid every time. Black people are gonna get the most value every time. Okay, yeah. that both both ill scenarios. I love both of those, <laughs> both of those aspects. How I look at it is historically, right? <clears throat> We have always been looked at it. We we this is a society we were born in society we live in. We have always been looked at as inferior, right? Inferior everything, especially thinkers, right? Mm -hmm. So if you think you can outthink me from without even I'm I'm um I'm got all this gold on, I got my headphones in, bumping my head to this hip hop playing in my shit, and you really like this motherfucker cannot know what he's doing, right? Mm -hmm. I'm at an advantage because I'm thinking through everything that's going on the table. I'm watching everything by by. I know, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. I think that puts us at a major, because we already underestimated. Yep, exactly. Couple of questions. One, when you play, you being an artist, right? Like when I'm listening to depend on the type of mood I'm in, in the tournament, the type of music I listen to. Mm -hmm. What do you listen to as an artist when you're playing? And do you ever listen to your own music while you're like playing tournament? Mostly I got my Spotify playlist playing, my hip hop Spotify playlist, and I'm on it. You know what I mean? Hey. I'm on my own Definitely. But I got mostly, I start out the tournament, like in the beginning, I, I, I need that hypeness. So I'm playing all fucking, I'm playing Fab, I'm playing J, I'm playing Kiss. There you go, Fab, my favorite rapper all the time. You know what I mean? I'm playing yeah. all my, I'm playing Wayne, I'm playing Drake, I'm playing, you know what I mean? All my shit. So, you know what I mean? But like you said, it's a, I, 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 I switch up my music depending on what stage of the tournament it is. Mm -hmm. So I, now let's yeah, say you I got a lay back the money. On the, yeah, close to the money. I got Nita Baker <laughs> on the brack stick. <laughs> Love it. Lori Hill. I got you go on, bro. I got this cool and relax. Cause all I'm doing is basically trying to fold my way into the fucking money. Absolutely. But like, not getting knocked out before the Yeah, money yeah, not trying to get busy and not trying to play heads. I'm You're sitting chill. there singing along. Chilling, bro. That's <laughs> For real. Yo, mm -hmm. and turn on they had this big ass like 60 inch TV playing sports right in front of me when I'm trying to play poker. I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's crazy. So distracting. Oh, fuck. in the uh, in the cash room or in the tournament room? In the tournament room, it was wow. right. Yo, right where that big ass screen was. Uh -huh. the, the tables that were right there. I got. I was table number three. I was right in front of the registration line. Oh, right shit. Yes, yes. Right next to that TV, there was like a. I mean, right next to that like projector screen, there was like a like a sixty inch TV playing March Madness games. Wow. So, Dealer that sat down, you know, they're just going through the routine dealing, watching the game, and they mm. keep like nudging me, like, Oh, you see that shit? I'm like, right, No, right, right, right. Like, watching this fucking game, right? I've been here for nine hours. I learned how to block all that stupid shit out of exactly. right. it. And, and the, the crazy thing, too, with tournaments is that there's a lot we could be doing or should be doing while we're playing to make sure that we're attentive, focusing on the game, but not losing interest. So, like, for me, when I play online, like, I try to have, like, 
my tables on one screen and maybe I'm watching sports center on the other, but have it on mute. Or maybe like I'm watching Twitch cause I'm jumping on Twitch. I'm going to start subscribing to your stuff after this okay, too, uh, too on Twitch. But normally I like watching other people play on Twitch while I'm playing to see them being patient, to see them in hands. So when you stream or when you play, what do you do to like stay focused when you're playing online or do you do right. the same music? I try not to have too many distractions. So like you said, I have, I have, um, I have a discord group, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And, you know, we all follow each other and all of that and um, subscribe to each other's channels and all that. So I might have them tabbed open, but I have them, you know what I mean? They volume down low. So I don't watch other poker players while I'm streaming. And another thing I, I, how I used to stream is I used to put my stream on a three minute delay. So yeah, anybody, so you never right? know your hands in real time. You never know my hand, but I stopped doing that. What what I use now is I use a card blocker over and my cards. The little image. What what right. image did you decide to pick? I actually got a, a image of me at Turner Stone last year at the, hey. at the image, right? So, but I could turn it off and on with my hotkeys and all that. So I eventually show my my chat or whoever watching the hand, but yeah. I like it better because it allows me to interact with people yeah. on real time. They ask me a question, they talk to me, it's real time, like, yeah, you're answering a question. Instead of waiting three minutes for me to answer your question, you know what I mean? So yeah. when it comes to the followers for the stream, is there anyone that's like a loyal fan that always pop in there or just anyone like you want a shout out bro. that's just always, always there that you give them their moment right now to let them know. Yeah, so the my platform. boy, my boy, he out in LA, his name, his screen name is Rain Boom. You know what I mean? He's in my chat all the time, always watching me. Um, shout out to Rain Boom. Yeah, definitely. Ooh, real one. Um, my boy um William Young. If y'all, if y'all um like New York hip hop, my man William Young, please, please, please check this brother out. V so, all right. one of the yeah. nicest, nicest, nicest ever. All man. right. So when we say New York hip hop, it's it's a mm -hmm. little weird because I'm like at that cusp in my mid-30s where New York hip hop, I prefer the upstate Buffalo sound of Grisilda. So mm -hmm. I like that old school kind of like Wu Tang's type of flow, even listen though my to, favorite rapper is fab. To, I, mean, yeah. I need content. This whole listen drill to my rap brother. stuff is not my type of right, scene yeah. at all. No, no, no. Definitely. And I, you'll never hear me listen to that either. When I say New York hip hop, I'm meaning like Kiss. I'm meaning like Raekwon. I'm meaning yeah. like, you know what I mean, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? And my brother William Young, L, 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 um, L artist work with Pat Poole's. Rest in peace. Um, K Slay was on every K Slay mixtape. K Slay drama king, right? Drama king, man. Rest in peace. You know man. what I mean? So definitely, but he always show love to my stream. You know, definitely ill artist, man. Ill author too, definitely. William Young. So, so what you got in the works? What's coming up for you? You got so, uh, you got an album? You... I just dropped a single last month. Um deep single about um it's called um vibe you know what i mean definitely it, it's more autobot what we were talking about earlier more audio autobiographical ah, however that goes <laughs> but uh yeah it tells a little story about you know what i mean um, um my path in life but definitely i'm about to drop probably next month i'm probably gonna shoot for may but definitely gonna finish this poker album called the bad beat you know what okay. I mean? So I can't wait. I got all the tracks done. I got all the beats for everything. So that yeah, I'm gonna, oh my God, I just want to put my all into it. You know what's crazy, man? I went to, I wrote, what I wanted to do with the album was I wanted to put snippets from um, Rounders in it. Mm, like little look like little clips and little parts where they talk it all audio like, part yeah like, like, everybody like the, old school, the old school like if you listen to the old school biggie albums where you would have the mad rapper and just the little interludes in between where you just get the little clips of the little stories before going to a song i think that'll well, be hard that should be crazy and i wrote the people wrote i think um paramount pictures um, owns the rights to it. I uh, wrote them by by telling them what I'm doing. They're like, nah, <laughs> you can't use it. You know what I mean? But definitely gonna drop that. And uh, I got another project coming out. And I um also got two books coming out this year. Okay. 
definitely pretty soon, yeah. You know? So what are they poker books or yeah, like so, what um, about? so the first book is um it's a book that I already had done with another publisher, but they're redoing it. So it's drama. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I write like mostly like drama, intriguing, like shit. You be like, yo, I can't believe this shit happened. Drama type stories. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And no, really uh, strong female characters and all of that okay. type of shit. So but the second uh, book I got coming out is um it's called a four. It is actually a translation of the uh, a remaking of the four gospels of Jesus Christ, right? Now I tell you I'm not religious, right? But what I do is I love um researching ancient wisdom and all that. And I find that, you know, what I mean, if you just um understand, take all the religious stuff out of, you know, what I mean, the gospels. You know what I mean? The four gospels, you could basically live a good life. You know what I mean? Going, yes, sir. Going through all of that. Right. So what mm-hmm. I did was I made, I translated the all four gospels into like modern day language. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. like where they, they'd be like in the Bible on the sermon of the mouth, be like, Jesus said, thou should not, it has been written, thou should not commit adultery. But even if you thinking about a woman you have already committed adultery in your head with her, right in my mm-hmm. translation it'd be like the old heads used to say you should not cheat on your shorty but i say even if you scoping out another chick you have already cheated on your shorty mm-hmm. in your heart right so uh, i do the whole four gospels like that so that's coming out this year. it's called four word that's what's up yes sir oh, uh I, I grabbed this i um i made a little per- poker on mm-hmm. published and i was gonna Gonna show Damien a little bit of it, but right. it's basically a lot of old people, a lot of the old folk don't like to use all them apps to record their shit. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So and just you write, write it right in here. I don't know if you can even see it. Yes, right, your circle the suits and shit. So we just working on some journals, you know, trying to be a little, uh, little author myself, but obviously not on so. your level. But maybe that's one day. So. Yeah, definitely, bro. Definitely. Yeah. We and we could we could definitely link up to put something put something down on, yeah, on so the thinking. lab. Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. We'll have to talk about that for sure. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, all right. I, so man, we've been talking for a minute. Let's get yes, to the, the hour. Yes. So, but you want to do the, the honors? Before we go into the question of the hour, Tony. Okay. I did have like one more question that I wanted to like ask you, like making a poker album. Like I feel when someone's in the lab, they go through a period or something inspires them. Like when you think of certain artists, you could hear the music or you could kind of figure out what they're going through, whether they're going through heartbreak, whether they're going through like a period of their life where they just have extra money, whether they have a bad shorty and that's what they're writing about. Like what inspired you to make a polka album? And while you're writing right now for the album, like what are you doing to, to get content and inspiration for the album? Is it while you're just streaming? Are you watching other people? Like I need to know about what this writing process is like and what inspired you because the title is bad beat so right so the 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 album's already done every song is already wrote wrote i have three songs that's already on spotify apple music that that's on the album already it was done already like a year ago so what made me start doing it is when i started streaming like two years ago right um you know, they started real hard on that content ban. You can't play other people's music while you stream, right? Mm-hmm. They, they give you strikes on your channel and shit. So I said, you know what? I could fucking put my own music on this shit. You know what I mean? While I stream. Right. And I was like, you know what? And, and I'm like, I'm streaming poker. So I'm like, you know what? I could make music about poker. Nobody ever did that shit before. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So, but the the content wise was you got different you got different layers of it, right? So the intro, and I sent it to I sent it to homie, so he'll let you, you check it out. So the intro is like a poem in the beginning, right? I'm like, welcome to the bad beat where hip hop and poker meet, where you can have a seat to compete, but we gonna need half your soul and some of your bankroll. 
See, here, you don't have to pay homage, but what you don't know could hurt your pockets. See, here, you could have 10 deuce off and win it all. And I shout out Doyle Brunson. Here, mm. a set of sixes can make a set of three fuck all. See, when Joe McKean smashed sunset of three, mm -hmm. right? And it'll go through all. I say, here, you could be a kid that could read and succeed. Talk about Daniel Negrano. I say, here, you don't have to win a chip to be the greatest. Right, Phil Ivy, you know what I mean? Never won a chip, but he's still everything, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, and I started off with that energy, like, I'm going to miss curfew. I'm down $603, it's hurtful. Old man just cracked my aces and started smirking. Just might follow him outside and murk him. Drunk motherfuckers and can't work him. My wife keep calling my phone to keep jerking, but I'm on tilt. Somebody might get killed if I lose the last 150 on my person. Ain't nothing worse than losing the bums. You got cake and you losing the crumbs. <laughs> Fuck what you thought, nigga. I ain't done. Hit the ATM, diminish my funds. Shit, I got to win half back. If I could just half that, I might end up running the back like a half back. Lee uh, broke, nigga. You can't have that. Ain't nobody to PayPal, Zelle, or Cash app. Yo, come on, son. Hey, that's the whole that's the intro vibe, right? We bringing it in. So that's now we got the... We got the Welcome to Vegas song. We got the, yeah. I got a song called Work For It, where, you know what I mean? It's a poker player schooling the chick. Like, yo, listen, it's all about this money. Do what you got to do to get your money. You know what I mean? I do what I got to do at the tables and I'm correlating. And like, she said, and he's just schooling her, like, yo, listen, get your fucking money. Don't worry about nothing else. You know what I mean? And yeah. just different aspects. Got to, um, yo, um, so these, yet you're saying that you wrote you wrote them you had to bought the beats right and yeah yeah um so like that one i just sent you was record i got like probably five songs done it's probably like 11 songs on the album so like so six more i gotta get they, done what i was gonna say for the the rounders clip um if the if the quote is popular enough you could probably just say that shit yourself and change your voice to make you sound like a Sound a little bit different, you know. Like it's like Jay Z, like Jay Z did off the um fucking um joint. Yep. Yeah, for real. Mm -hmm. yep. Oh, you want to be a big guy? You want to move some cocaine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. That's L. I like that idea definitely. Um, and there's and you know, like you said, those those lines are real popular, so the right. people will, people know what you're talking about right away. Right, you know? right. Especially um, I love I love the part where some went to to go meet commit commission or whatever his name was. Yeah, and yeah. told him, there's no money this time. I'm like, oh, oh. <laughs> what do you mean it's no money this time, bro? No. Let's get to the question of the hour. So what actually let's not <laughs> <laughs> let's ask you what I want to ask you first. So uh, how much money would you have to win to quit poker? Not an amount. Okay. Never okay. quit poker. Okay. So you I, win 20 million, you're still gonna play. I'm still every day I probably a diet on a fucking poker table, bro. Like That's it. how much I love it, bro. Because my love for it is built off of right of uh that necessity in the beginning, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I have to I have to get good at this to in order to eat. Right. And to to be able to transform it into, you know, what I mean, I love the competitive nature of it to today. You know, what I mean, all that's combined to I love the community of it. Like, you know, what I mean, I sit down, sit down at tables with uh, I sat down at a table last year with a brother. He didn't have no hands. He had the robotic joint shoes to pick up his cards. Wow. Right. Great brother. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. you meet so many people, brother in a wheelchair that have to have somebody pull mm -hmm. his cars up for him, bro. Mm -hmm. But this is his game, too. This is our mm -hmm. shit. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I can't I can't never leave that, bro. Never. Oh, so, so. so now I think that was a good segue into the question of the hour. Mm -hmm. So, sir, what do you think? Is poker life or is poker ain't life? And I'll okay. kind of give my little take too. And Tony, if you want to give your little take. So okay. we're always torn where I'm like, like I shared in the beginning a little bit. To me, my stance is poker ain't life. My whole thing is like, I felt I lost a lot of myself 
when I felt addicted to the game. So now I've learned and I've grown how to separate the two where I don't make every moment of my day. Like I was the person in the shower in a tournament running out while I'm showering on the street, playing on the phone. Like I, if I made poker so much that to me, poker ain't life. I'm relearning how to live a life and coexist while taking poker a lot less serious. So for me, it's poker ain't life. Uh, Tony, what's your stance? And for me, man, poker is life. Poker is really whatever you want it to be. It can be, you know, a, a range of or a portion of your life, however much you want it to be, you know. And like, you know, maybe a couple months ago, I wasn't, you know, necessarily 100 percent into poker. But now I got, you know, I got it's like I just came from Turning Stone. I'm doing this in the podcast and I'm doing, you know, I'm creating vlogs and I've got I got Borgata coming up. I'm looking at Vegas. So, you know, maybe, you know. Like uh, poker is like 75% of my life or 60% of my life, you know? Um, but you know, okay. it all comes with the word. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I feel right. That yep. we are looking at life the wrong way. Right. When we say something ain't life, right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. I think we're looking at it the wrong way. You could be, at a poker table, you could be grocery shopping, you could be playing ball, you could be playing video games, you could be streaming, you could be doing whatever you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. You're still a parent. At right. all those times, being a parent has never left you. Parenting is life. Right, it never leaves your mentality, it never leaves your heart, it never leaves your soul. Even when you're not around your kid, you're still a parent. Right. right? That's how I feel about poker. I don't care what I'm doing, I'm gonna be thinking about poker within <laughs> a few seconds or whatever I'm doing. So True. poker is life to me. Okay. You know, we just have to define life a little, a little differently. Poker yeah. is life, definitely. I love that breakdown of it too. Damn. I I, I'm not gonna lie, Toy. I don't know if you and Barnes colluded. Like you, yeah, I was like, we gonna get this thing. Here. We gonna get something real good and convince him. Cause that, that but, listen, we all go through that. We all go through. Am I doing? Did I choose the right path? Am I doing the right thing? Can I? Can I handle <clears throat> the downswings? Can I handle the the the? losing can i handle tilt can i handle myself can i get myself under control where i'm more disciplined in this game and the answer is yes we just have to work on that just like we work on every other aspect of our game let's go and that discipline is the the key that discipline to not play that discipline to stay within the bankroll that yes. discipline to go like yo i don't have the 109 today i'm gonna go sit in that 1650 Big i don't know about the little eight dollar eighty Big cent the little eight eighties Exactly, so, bro. But when you exactly. down at your bottom and you discipline, twenty dollars go a long mm -hmm. way. Wait. It got but two dollars and fifty cent tournaments. You can buy in the <laughs> six and oh, you can buy rebuy back in six times in that bitch. <laughs> and, and, and then the discipline is you cash for three, four hundred after your little twenty. It took you a week before you built this little bankroll. Then are you disciplined to keep grinding, or am I going to go take my shot at a 55, 50K? You know, Sundays be having right. tournaments. You looking at the guarantee, exactly. like, what? Exactly. Like, 300,000 guarantee? Like, and, I'm going to fire two, three bullets in that, listen, and then there's no way I'm back PK, to $2. I love PKOs, right? Mm -hmm. Because I love getting that extra reward of knocking somebody out and getting instant money. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I love them. So I find myself doing that. You know what I mean? I got like a G. I'm playing motherfucker. I'm reboarding into a hundred and nine dollar PKO four times. Like, mm -hmm. the fuck am I doing, bro? Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> definitely, bro. They enticing, bro. Yeah, and there's so person. many of them, and it's always going. Like ACR, I, I had to delete the app. Hey, bro, you a, listen, you asked a great question, right? Earlier. You said, do I think ACR is rigged and online poker is rigged and all that, right? I stopped playing on ACR for like a year, bro, because mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it, bro. I swear. They had this thing. I don't know if you know this on, on y'all probably know, um, Shark Scope, where it measures. Yeah, we can see there, like, how much they win. Or disgusting, they bro. That's, my Shark Scope is disgusting, right? <laughs> 
talk about my craft go down to the but bro, I swear for to everything I love, bro. 90% of that is me getting bad beat out of big tournaments. I already know. And it's 90%. always it's always deep when you are a chip leader, someone else the chip leader. It's probably someone you see win all the time. And I'm like, yo, how? <laughs> like, why I couldn't lose to somebody else? Like, how? This but you're not we're all look, your graph ain't supposed to look crazy, anyways. Like the best players in the world are only like winning like like what is it, like 20% of the time or something? Like? Tournaments, yeah. 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 Nah, I, was, I, totally. I heard somebody say that you could reset your shark scope too. I never knew that. Man, yeah. I definitely reset my shit like four times. My shit. Was oh, back. for real? How you do that? I never knew how to do this shit. Oh, so you could with once you pay right, like you could pay things like twenty dollars for three months. Uh-huh. I just pay the twenty dollars, and then you pick your name, and you say like, "All right, cool." Like my name on there is like, "Come on, son." So oh, come on, son. That's I, your ACR yeah, name. Yeah, come on, right. son, and the other ones. Oh my God, come on, son, because. When yeah. I get bad beat, that's what I yell every time. Like, come oh, <laughs> on. Like, so that's how I just stuck with that name because right, sometimes right. you can't control your reaction. I can't blame nobody, but I'm going to yell, come on, son. I'm not going to yell anything else. But right. when you pay the um 20, you say like, hey, this is my name. This is my name. This is my name. And you could reset it. So because if you did it today, it will track everything from March 23rd forward. Okay, gotcha. But, so I did it because I felt like when people saw I was down four or five thousand, like that's not a lot of money, but to a person in a five dollar game, they're mm-hmm. like, nah, you see the little fish on their name, like right. I ain't like the little fish. Uh, yeah. No. So as far as what you got going on uh the rest of the year, what any any plans coming up? You uh no, just continue working on the music. I want to really build my um really build my stream up. You know what I mean? I love streaming on Twitch. You know what I mean? I've, uh, I've been monetized for like a year messing with them. So I just want to build my audience up. So I've been learning, you know, creating content on other platforms. You know what I mean? Really boost that up for you. You know what yeah. I mean? Give me one Let- second, y'all. Come in. I'm going to kill my daughter. Come in. Say hi first. Hi. Hello. Good you know, night. Phone and beat it. <laughs> So um yeah I'm um, building that up making the content for different platforms YouTube yo it's crazy um it's so ill it, it, it opened my mind though but so my stepdaughter she's 20 so I'm driving her back from Buffalo here right and mm-hmm. me her and my boy is in the car right so like I tell you I'm from the 90s and all that shit so I like all kind of music so I was bumping the Landis Morrison right old Landis Morrison right and I'm Bumping it, screaming, singing it to the top it's of my like, lungs. Yeah. Yes, bro. I'm singing. Um, I'm singing. That's who would have thought it figure, but I'm singing. Um, I forgot to say. Oh, uh, did you forget about me, Mister Duplicit? Right, I'm bumping that hard. She recorded me in the back seat, bro. <laughs> Puts me on TikTok, bro. <laughs> Yo crazy she showed me the other day son viral movie crazy bro i'm like yo you went viral <laughs> viral bro anybody like oh my god he's killing me i love how hype he is ah but i'm just being me and she just put this shit on tiktok blue, blue. Uh-huh. oh shit I yeah we use, yeah like, i, I use like, that shit yeah for real i mean we on we on tiktok too we, we try to figure out different ways to get on there but the live the tiktok lives are crazy bro oh yeah yeah like they it's it's it's, it's, a, it's a whole nother a whole it's like social media on crack bro it's it's a whole nother wow. game. i've seen people like if you go through just like scrolling through the tiktok lives i've seen people have channels that they're not even in it there's like farmers out there they just set up a camera in their barn it's just like hundreds of goats just walking around and they got like, literally I've watched that. I went to the page, 3000 people just watching goats. <laughs> I swear, bro. I'm like, what is going on, bro? Uh, like, we got to tap into this shit, bro. That's we like, tap into this. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like, that's not even young people shit. So clearly I'm out the loop. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, right. Goats like, is like I went on Twitch one day to go watch, um, to go watch one of my men's playing poker and shit. 
And you know how you turn it on? They 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 show you somebody stream and all that. They had a girl sleeping in the bed in yeah. fucking like the Philippines, bro. Yeah, she yeah. sleep. Yeah, like eight thousand people watching her sleep, bro. Yeah, that shit blew my fucking mind, son. I know these some nasty perverted ass niggas, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> eight thousand people watching somebody sleep, crazy. Oh, Tony, what did you say? My bad. Oh, I just said he's not going to, no plans for Vegas? Oh, no, not this year. No, 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 no. Okay. I still got, I still got a little restraints on me because of my past life. You know what I mean? Still got some restraints. So I could travel. I just got to get permission, but you know yeah. what I mean? You know how that go. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, yeah, definitely let us know about uh, Borgata. Yo, Jersey. definitely, 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 bro. Okay. Uh, before I hop off, because like I'm hungry at this point. I'll like, say, legit work, then jump yeah. right on to this. And the yeah. conversation was so good, I didn't even want to jump off of, of this at all. I'll so say. I just looked it up. I found the YouTube page for the Bars Bang on YouTube. Yes, but sir. before we g- jumped in, I'm curious, what um people do you watch on twitch and then i want you to shout your twitch and your handles out as well and where people can find you got you got you so um poker wise i watch besides my little community everybody that's in my discord that i that i work with they don't stream poker they stream fortnite all this stuff but they good brothers you know what i mean so Mm -hmm. i deal with them but poker wise i watch um poker pastor he's a good dude you know what i mean um definitely watch I, i play his tournament every night um, Bosky, Jeff Bosky. They yeah, got to do the, the Bosky special. Bosky special, you know what I mean? I got 10th play. I got knocked out right before the fucking final table the other night. Oh, hey, oh, and, and on social media, if you if you add him on Instagram, he'll talk back to you too. Yeah, he's a definitely, dude. Like, definitely. He, he doesn't definitely. feel, even though he's a pro, he's not too big. That's one thing uh, I love about the poker community. Uh, you could be a two dollar player; they still gonna give you that love, that respect for being a part of their community look, and play their that, game. That song I was just spitting to y'all, while I shout out everybody in the beginning. Um, and one of the parts I say, um, um, your mouth can make us hate you and love you at the same time, at the same time. And I shout out Phil Helmuth in the beginning of the song, the one I just sent. Yeah. I put it on, um, put it on Twitter. Why Phil Helmuth hit my inbox and all that? Like, yo, I love that song, bro. Wow. Word, bro. Phil Helmuth said, I love that song. Word born. Yo, I would take a screenshot of that if you ever I did. I, I had it last year. I put it, I put it up last year. Oh, you know what? It was like a, a year ago I put that out. That, that, that could be like a dope part of an album cover or the little preview. That mm-hmm. little screenshot for the bad beat. Ooh. Yeah. Um, yeah. so the so the album, so that song is out. I made the video for it, right? But I never put it out, out, out. You know what I mean? I just made the video for it and put the video on like a clip of the video on Twitter, like the oh. beginning of it. And okay. yeah, he heard that. I, I tagged him and I tagged him, the ground where everybody I'm shouting out and, and he said, Yo, I love this song. All right, all right. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. Yeah. For the Twitter, the Twitter handle we got. At raise the bar seven one eight. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. What's, and I, I'm trying to find the Twitch when I got the link here. Right. But bar seven one eight with a Twitch. Z, right? TV. Yes. Yep. Bar seven one eight. Hey, Bars, you doing numbers on here? One hundred and fifty plus trying, people trying, following. Man. You doing I'm numbers trying, on I'm here? Trying, man, I'm trying. It's beautiful, man. People and it's crazy. People be coming through, man, showing mad love, subscribing and all. I'm like, okay, let's go. You know what I mean? Shooting me them little bitties and all that. I take it. <laughs> I take it. Right. Yeah, but yeah, I definitely want to blow up the YouTube some more. You know what I mean? It it all comes with making. You know what I mean? Making content consistently. Yeah. And I I worked. A, I used to drive buses in Buffalo. At the NFTA, like you could make crazy bread doing that shit. But I left it just so I could have more time to work on the music and the streaming and all that. So, do you have somebody to help you? Or are you doing content I do creation? Ev- I do everything myself, bro. Every- I make the videos. I do everything. Make the, I- the ill shit. I like with with OBS now, Streamlabs OBS is that you with the touch of a button, you could clip your stream. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you know, whenever I'm in an ill hand, I just clip it. 
You know mm. what I mean? And I have mad clips by the end of the stream, okay. and then I could just use them to put on different social medias. Mm, that's smart. That's, yeah. that's, that's definitely the move. But definitely twist.tv, bar 718, definitely. I stream on um, Sunday starting at 3 o'clock, Monday through Thursday starting at 7 p.m., or Friday and Saturday. You know? okay. Do you be rapping? you be spitting for your listeners and I shit? Be, I pl- all I play is my music on the joint, so you know I be rhyming all the time, man. All the time, man. All right. oh, we have to check you out. Yes. Check them out, people. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah. Y'all appreciate y'all brothers, too, man. Y'all movement is crazy when... It's crazy because a young a young brother on Twitter posted a clip of one of y'all y'all podcasts, right? I'm like, mm-hmm. yo, that's ill, man. I love. It. I say, yo, I got I inbox him. You know what I mean? He's just a, a me and Twitter friends. I'm like, yo, I got to get in contact with these dudes. He said, yo, they on IG. That's why I went to IG, and it was the rest is history, bro. That's crazy that history. history. See that, Damien? Yeah, bro. Uh, somebody put a clip of y'all on freaking Twitter, bro. That's crazy. Wow. Hmm. I said, that is an ill concept. Y'all got it. I, I love what y'all doing, for real. Uh, we appreciate you coming through and being authentic as a whole, because I think for us is giving people our authentic self. I think that's what makes people comfortable. It doesn't feel like it's someone sitting here reading things, trying to line you up. Right, sometimes right, right, people right. try to line you up and make it look one way when it's not. And then another thing that happens sometimes too, you get on a podcast and they don't even like ask you anything really personal that mm-hmm. make you want to open up and let people know you. Exactly. So like, I think, and salute to Tony, too, because he's all over this. Tony do a majority of the work. I'm just here trying to have a good time and have fun with it. But Tony, take right. this shit. Yeah, Tony, take this shit serious. So big shout out to you, Tony, because for a lot of the people, salute. yes, big Thank salute you. to Tony because he's the mastermind behind a lot of the stuff. And he connects with the people. And, like, the, the people that we get, like you said, it's a movement where now even – um. Old girl, you talked about initially. We reached out to her like before. <laughs> she was a little hesitant, but when she sees us like laid back, is is super casual. It's almost like if you went to like a game and you was just sitting on a couch chopping it up with people you know that play poker and y'all just shooting the shit. We don't try to make it seem anything too formal. We don't try to make it paint one picture that is not. The biggest thing for us is to give that platform where I wish I, someone would have interviewed me at the start of my career and, or maybe I had something to listen to that said, yo, you know what? Enjoy the game, but make sure you handle business as a parent and make sure you, you know the family is good before you do anything else. And just seeing different people, whether Latin, Asian, Black, White, all of us is together. All is one with the same love of the game, no matter how we look, where we're from, we're all connected with the love of the game. And I think hearing different people's story where someone can hear our story, what it's like in New York. And then we have another episode where it's a female in Dallas and another episode with a guy all the way in India. I don't Bro, even, I Tony, that yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know who, who Tony going to find next. Tony, <laughs> an A&R company about to get you next, Tony, because I don't know hey, who's hey, finding this amazing find piece by the woodworks. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. And and the ill the ill shit is the lesson for all of us is right that being our authentic accessible selves gets us further in this world than anything else, right? Because I could have hit him up like, "Yo, bro, I watched this." Boom, 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 boom. He hit me back immediately, bro. Immediate, like, "Yo, this is dope." I've been trying to get with somebody that does po- put poker and hip hop together. Like, you know what I mean? He, Ill, he, right? he legit, all we had was just a it's hook just, about poker. We were hyped like, damn, imagine if we actually knew someone that rapped about it. And we couldn't find anyone at the time, like, but it was something that connects both worlds, like you said, both the hip hop, both the poker world. My man, Tony, I don't even know if you're real, Tony. You probably an AI because uh, you're doing a lot of work. You, you too <laughs> efficient, my man. You too efficient. I told you, I they already tried to block us. They thought we was bots because we were liking too much shit and working too hard, man. Mm, right. That right, fucking this shit. Jamaican worth ethic. I can't even talk either tonight. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> that Jamaican work ethic, you know, is better than bots out right. there, you know? That's right, bro. Well, Boz, you summed it up for us. Poker is life. 
Yes, you sir. Shifted the perspective a little bit. I'm I'm gearing towards poker is life a little bit more. I just gotta stay within the control of it. It could be on my mind all the time, but the fact if it's on my mind, whether I'm playing or not, I'm making it a part of my life. Cause really and truly, it is always on my mind. Everything I do, if I see something and I can't afford it, I'm like, yo, I gotta win a tournament. Right. To get that money. I'm not no, thinking of like I gotta so work extra. Yep. Exactly. You don't think hit, about I gotta it. work and save or do this. You think about I gotta bink a tournament to get that that poker always is on my mind so you are right so appreciate you coming on for this episode so tony anything else you kind of want to say before we wrap it up yeah Yeah, bars appreciate you coming out we'll we'll, uh we'll have to have back on and you know we definitely got a link up in uh uh borgata for sure uh, maybe we'll do another live interview and see you know and then interview again see how yeah, you did hopefully the album is done by then most likely will be and we could definitely chop it up about that bro yeah 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 but we'll, we'll talk even more about music and shit you know um but i just want to say uh thank you for coming out and for all our viewers um that have been holding holding us down supporting us on youtube uh, if you haven't you can definitely subscribe on youtube subscribe on spotify make sure you download our content on spotify that's what pushes our stuff up to the top that's right <laughs> I'm y'all. All right, y'all. Y'all be safe. One.